Hi everybody, some pretty full on stuff has been going on for me. Not that I upload consistently and in large volumes, but I thought I'd better give a brief explanatory note as to why so many weeks have passed and I haven't bothered with YouTube. The tone of my channel at the moment is maneuvering through the world with a Greek ethnic identity. You know, part of growing up Greek was that no matter what, we always had to speak up for what is right. I remember one time in Greece, an older man going into a rage because there were people who would abuse the children, burn them with cigarettes hit them, smack them up, beat them up, make them look as if they were sorry and had injuries so they can collect money. It was the gypsies who did that a lot, but I'm not trying to discriminate against them. It was just part of the harsh reality and part of the harsh existence living as a Roma person in uh, Greece at the time. So I remember one guy who got off of the bus at the same time as us. Right at the bus stop, there was one of their community kids who looked in an atrocious condition. He went up to the child and asked the child what he wanted to eat so he could go and buy, buy it for him. Then his mother came forward and said, no, he wants money. And the man refused to give him, to hand over money because he knew that the money would go to his mother to do as she wished with. Now, I know that she was a poor lady. Anybody might challenge. So what if the money went to her? But he was also, this guy was very much aware that these people abuse the children just to appeal to the compassion of the masses and generate money on the violated kids' back to make an income on their misery, a profit on their suffering. And so you see, the broader Greek community always comes together when it's time to speak up against what's wrong and when it identifies injustice Western people are more laid back and tend not to stick their nose in other people's business. But not us Greeks. We have to say something. I would like to acknowledge that you can't make generalizations. There are always exceptions to the rule. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Even among our people, of course, there are those without empathy or compassion. But overall, our people are encouraged very much to make social commentary, to care about everything and to express both their feelings and their opinions when it comes to certain going-ons, certain social phenomena and topics that matter. We are very vocal when it comes to politics too because it affects the citizens and the state of the country. We can't help it. We are passionate people. I like it like that because to me it always felt as if my community, my direct circle, but even the indirect circles of people, strangers whom I didn't know and would comment or get involved in what they observed, cared about others, not just their self. It may be inevitable, you can't help it, there will be cruel people even amongst our own racial minority. But the point is that we are brought up in a manner that discourages apathy. We are the embodiment of the opposition of apathy. So here I am. I'm quickly going to address Foodie Beauty because she is the exact antithesis to that. She embodies apathy. In her most recent online shenanigans, she spoke about the fires that are burning out of control in Canada and instead of having some kind of compassion about the wildlife, nature and the danger the whole situation poses for residents there, no sensitivity exhibited from her whatsoever. She made it all about herself again and said, well, you're going to blame me for that too. What do you want me to do about it? Hold a vigil? What a callous, cruel, completely inappropriate and assholy comment to make. Not an inkling of kindness or concern in her cold soul. Who cares if thousands or millions of innocent animals are being scorched alive? How dare do we spare a moment of thought and give our attention to the victims? This should be all about her. No sorrow, no feelings for anyone outside herself. In psychopath fashion. Do you recall the time? No, I won't let you forget about it, Chantel, which wasn't too long ago when she mocked the animals she ran over. Not only did she laugh about it, but she actually made fun in such a cruel and callous, cold-hearted way. What do you want me to do about it? Go to Trader Joe's and buy some artificial flowers to hold a vigil for the roadkill? What a f***.
douchebag. She can't understand why people are so much against her, why they despise her or at the very least dislike her. She can't see anything that she's doing as wrong. Either that or she's purposely choosing to ignore her. In most probability though, she believes she's infallible. Others are the villain, the ugly monster. People who have narcissistic personality disorder, as I do believe she has, if not being a full-blown psychopath or sociopath in the least. Having NPD means that in their eyes they could do no wrong. It is them against the world. Everybody is out to get them and they don't want to be normal because they're special. It makes them be unique. It makes them stand out. Now it is one thing being proud of who you are even though you're going against the grain. If you stand up for your own beliefs, if you are a little bit different from everybody else in dress sense, through a handicap, through orientation and you're being discriminated against but you won't let others bully you into their conservatism. If your ideology is different from mainstream society, if you do things in your own way, yes, people might be against you because you pose a threat to them. Anything that is different will make others look at you with one eye. In Chantel's case, this has nothing to do with why she is despised by the masses. They're infuriated because they have seen the way she treats animals. There is evidence, video evidence online, showing her at times of need reaching out to BBJ and saying, oh BBJ, I need your loving today. I need some hugs and kisses. Please come and show me some love. She wanted to validate herself that at a time Nader was dumping her and didn't want anything to do with her, the cat still loved her. If a beautiful, pure, innocent soul like an animal loves her, she must have value. She must be grand and an awesome person with value, worthy of love. Every step she makes in her life is with the look at me, look at me motivation and kiss the ground that I walk on because I so deserve it. She cares for no one in return. That's how narcissists are. Her heart won't melt or bend at the harshest adversity somebody else is going through. This is typical of all narcissists, not just her. I'm highlighting this because she's very capable of coming for the you're targeting me angle if she caught whiff of what I'm saying here. She is the good guy and everybody else is the bad guy. That's what you've got to remember when it comes to Chantal and other narcissistic personality disorder individuals. There's not just a strong focus but an obsession with the self. Everything is about her. Nothing else matters. Everything that exists around her, all living beings, are just inanimate objects. Yes, even innocent animals who are not capable of the malice of human beings. Everyone is to be used and everybody comes with an expiry date. She tosses them out like empty packaging once she's done with them. Everyone is a thing to serve her ego. I need your love today. Come here, baby girl. Come here, angels. Give me some kisses. I need your hugs. As soon as she met Nader, she was ready to euthanize PBJ and goodness knew what she was going to do with Sam because he was too young a cat to put to sleep. So he presented a problem, an obstacle for her. Both of the cats were obstacles for her to live with Nader, who didn't want cats because cat hair bothered him. How petty, right? Imagine wanting to get rid of her cats who had given her so much love and happiness throughout the years just so she can move in with an abuser, a person who had been to prison for hurting other human beings, stabbing them. Her outbursts were, well... I've given them enough good years of my life, now I have to look after my happiness. So I'm definitely going to speak up against that. When you make up lies in order to sway the people's opinion toward you against somebody else and you allege that they murdered the dog, the reason being the dog couldn't cope with the anxiety and the owner couldn't either. That's not just skewing of facts, that's completely fabricating some. The poor animal didn't make it to the vet even. She suddenly collapsed and fell to her death, causing much devastation and heartbreak to her human. Don't project your own realities onto somebody else. So because poor little Harry couldn't give you enough attention, their nature is very different to that of cats, hamsters. You had to go and obtain a cat to validate yourself through. I clearly recall Chantal saying, I need constant attention 24-7. 
I demand that. I'm sure there is video evidence of that still online somewhere. The minute she's done with that phase in her life, she will dump Julia to some abuser's home and wander off to Saudi Arabia and different destinations in the world because apparently now she wants to travel as she's been hoping to do so all along. What I'm trying to say is that Julia is not different because she represents her relationship with Salah. She only represents the gaps that she's filling in her life at the moment, staying in an apartment in Kuwait most of the day and Harry not being able to give her the attention that a cat otherwise would with her playful nature, her physical closeness and exhibition of affection that are part of a cat's behavioural patterns. A poor little hamster couldn't satisfy the unsatiated ego of a person with NPD. My point of view is that Chantal is using Julia as a way to bring Salah and her closer together in the way that some women think that a human child would but creating moments of closeness and affection between them that are currently lacking in their relationship. We've already heard her give us a hint that she looks forward to the favourite part of her day which is her lying in bed with Salah and the cat and watching horror films. This guy is entertaining her every whim. Horror films? I would totally freak out if somebody forced me to watch something that I dislike. Or even if I kind of liked it, watching that genre over and over would drive me crazy. And I know we're all different, but I still think that Salah is entertaining her every whim. Whatever food she wants to eat, whether she wants a hamster, a cat whatever videos they want to make, streaming, because he's keeping his eye on the prize that's at the end of this journey, no matter how unpalatable the whole experience may be to him. After all, he hasn't come so far just to give it up now without any rewards. But back on track about Chantel's egotism and narcissism. Chantel indulges in her egotism and narcissism, making it all about her, alleging that viewers are targeting her and bullying her because of her weight. But that's not it. At all. People make her eating behaviour a point of reference because it's part of her online toxicity. What to take away from all this is that people with narcissistic personality disorder think that they're special, unique and that everybody is envious of them. That's why the references of Chantal to individuals who are jealous of her because of her beauty, because of her outstanding personality which is larger than life and because she's capable of so much more than other people. Others are also allegedly envious of her because she's a celebrity. I mean she always calls viewers her fans as if she's a rock and roll star. So in her own eyes, she doesn't know, she's not aware that she's doing something wrong because she's, according to her own evaluation, unusual, special, different, and she stands out from the rest of the boring world. A quick message to Chantal, I was going to leave a comment under your video because I was infuriated by the stuff you were alleging and by how clueless you were as to the realities, the sinister realities of why people are so outraged with you, carrying on as if you are the damsel in distress who is wrongly done by the whole world, despite the sinister realities of the evil fate you impose upon innocent animals. When you're done with them, you dump them, as a narcissist would do to anybody. So even though I had typed up my comment and I was ready to post underneath one of Chantal's videos, I'm very much aware that she deletes negative comments a lot, as she has done to other of my statements in the past. I'm not going to allow you gag me or anybody else. You wonder why people make so many videos of you or rather about you because you won't let anyone express their opinion. You just say, if you don't like what I'm doing, stop watching my channel. And anyway, in your most recent mukbang, you said that you enjoy all the attention. You admitted that. The point is, Chantel, people are too far involved now because of the abuse that you have brought onto innocent animals because of the way that you use pets as part of your validation then you discard them the devaluing and discarding movements of any narcissist it's too late you brought it on yourself and nobody's just going to step back and just not do anything about it the least they're going to do is shout from the rooftops what an evil witch you are don't try to gaslight us again like any narcissist would we know what the facts are it's not because of at bbj's older age that you wanted to euthanize her you used 
her older age to manipulate facts and to say that she was incapable and she now had to be euthanized. She's doing pretty well for an individual her age, at least I'd think, and so did the vet. Your own health is in a much worse state than BBJ's, but you have an entitlement, a sense that you've got every right to live. If we follow your logic, you should be put to sleep. You wanted to get rid of your cats as far back as Nader, and now again with Salah. You do this every time you meet a man and you want to go off with him. The cats becoming convenient especially if these men don't want them in their lives or if these men live in other countries and you can't transport these poor animals finally don't try to gaslight us as far as Salah is concerned and regarding the whole scam option it is a scam because there is video evidence of you saying that within a week of meeting Salah you were so smitten with him within two days of meeting him you wanted to go to Kuwait and marry him because he proposed to you and you had accepted you were excited, you said that he was in love with you two days after meeting him. It doesn't matter if you spent an entire week talking to him, even 24 hours a day, he was still a stranger you knew nothing about, other than what he told you and what suited him. What decent and genuine man, 28 years of age, meets a woman who is at least 10 years older than him and gets smitten with her within two days and proposes to her, especially a woman who with such a troubled past, with such a shady character online and such embarrassing behaviour, and especially a man who comes from such a strict background. You know, I'm Greek and growing up Greek means that I can't keep quiet about the BS. Moral of the story, quit acting as if you're innocent because you're anything but, especially where the predicament of innocent animals is involved at your hands. I'm glad I'm Greek because what that means is having a big mouth, standing up and fighting for what's right. Despite the repercussions, whether it will bring positives or negatives in my life, even to the point of destruction. I want to make it clear, this has nothing to do with me gaining the favour of other peers, of other YouTubers, so that I might gain the support and so that they may promote my videos. If somebody says or does something I don't agree with, especially something that goes against my very fabric of morals, I will speak up against it. There are certain point of views I disagree with. One thing that really sits uncomfortably with me is when certain individuals refer to women as charmotas because of the makeup level. Does that mean that women who use cosmetics are low class, easy and promiscuous? I detest that. I also detest the whole concept of somebody trying to push their own ideas onto others and to disqualify those people's own. Presenting their own perceptions as the correct ones while strongly attacking and opposing the beliefs of other people we all have our own perceptions for our own reasons and providing they're based on ethical conduct and ethical code then that's okay it's all right to have your own opinions despite my disagreement with other people's versions of things or the way they interpret the world or their particular biases and fixations i commend kindness to animals above anything else because regardless of all the trivial bs that we bicker about if you've got love in your heart for little living beings denoting of course all creatures great and small it means you've got a good soul if you are showing concern, love and care for the most vulnerable members of our community who are completely open to our evil, then that says volumes about you. Also, regardless of my difference in opinions over matters with people, I will stand up and speak up for them, not because they can't do it for themselves, but because what you're doing is wrong, Chantel, fabricating entire facts, events, background stories, and details about their lives in order to discredit them. That's pretty low. And part of the dark tried in psychology that makes up very dangerous personalities. Psychopathy, which means a lack of remorse or compassion. Narcissism and machiavellianism, which means mass manipulation. And you have exhibited examples of all. But just before I go, what I wanted to highlight, it has nothing to do with courage and you going to the other side of the world to try something new when you went off to meet Salah in Kuwait. It has everything to do with desperation, don't get the two confused. And because we must always back up what we have to say with evidence, I will bring this image to mind. The night that your grandmother died, Carly came into your live chat and you had the audacity to be laughing, throwing your head back and asking her, Carly, do you think that people will pay to see my...
on OnlyFans. So viewers think it's all about money. Of course she wants the money, but the main point here is her validation, just as it is for any person with narcissistic personality disorder. In foodie beauty's esteem, they're paying to see my private bits, therefore I must be popular, I must be desired, wanted and envied. She doesn't see that people are actually tuning in because she's a spectacle, somebody that everybody is actually poking fun at, not because they are in awe of her in any shape or form. Sorry Chantal, I don't like being cruel or mean, but you don't give a shit about anybody's feelings and especially the welfare of innocent animals or their basic rights for that matter. Why should we care about how you feel? More importantly, why should we feed or care about your ego, your narcissistic core? You keep seeking validation and I understand that any time people pay attention to you, even if it's negative, that kind of validates you. But we are here to rub the cold, hard facts in your face, just like you devalue innocent others. And while no human being can absolve him or herself from some kind of guilt, animals are completely innocent, yet you use them, abuse them and then discard them. We are aware and nothing you say or do will detract from the truth. There is also evidence parts of your streams online that were your own undoing. In the end, despite the tactics of a narcissist, he or she is his or her own downfall. They themselves betray their own self ironically and reveal the truth amid the whole obsession with their self. Whether you believe in karma or not, I guess that is some kind of cosmic blind justice.